well, hello there. I was just doing some light reading. Spending the weekend revisiting the classics. Such as, ah, this is a good one. Yeah. And even though I've read these books dozens and dozens of times, I still have a good time revisiting them. Good times. Speaking of good times, I will confess to you that in addition to enjoying the classics, I also enjoy a good horror book. A creepy tale that promises a chill or a fright. Sadly, there are not too many horror books made for smart people like you and me. I suppose the mindless masses need their entertainment too. And who could begrudge them? Certainly not I. However, there are a few rare horror books that even people like us, the highly intelligent, can enjoy too. In fact, I have prepared a list of such books, a top 10 as the kids call it. So if you are smart, and well, you clicked on this video, so obviously you know a thing or two, right? And if you enjoy horror, I think you are likely to find a few titles from this list that you are going to want to check out. So after a short intro sequence, I will share with you my top 10 horror for smart people. So like, subscribe, and enjoy. I'll see you on the other side. Starting off my list at number 10, Brainchild by Andrew Niederman. Oh, he can spin a yarn, this Andrew Niederman. And this offering from 1981 is pretty tame in terms of horror, but it's an interesting story and it's well done. The protagonist, 16-year-old Lois, is very smart. She is the smartest person in her family. She's the smartest person in her school, teachers included. But it's, uh, it's not always easy being the uh, smartest person in the room, right? She's not antisocial. It's just that the people she's meant to socialize with are idiots by comparison. So she doesn't do much socializing. Instead, she does experiments. Behavioral psychology, that's her thing. However, her mother wants her to be a normal girl. So she tears down the lab that Lois had set up in the home, gets rid of all the animals and such. Lois does not despair. She finds even better subjects for her experiments, her family. Brainchild is good fun. Borderline YA and very light on horror. Uh, two things I normally don't like in books, but I had a good time with this one and I'm happy to recommend it. At number nine, Little Eve by Catriona Ward from 2018. A historical fiction horror set in the early parts of the 20th century on an island off the coast of Scotland. We have a cult uh, comprised of women and young girls and their... Um, older male father figure cult leader. The story begins with a mass suicide, or was it mass murder? One girl survived, or was it two, or three? In classic uh, Catriona Ward fashion, she will keep you guessing and turning those pages until the very end. Smart people are going to enjoy this horror thanks, especially to a retired policeman character who engages with one of the survivors of the cult, and he tries to um, instigate conversations with her about the parlor tricks and the psychological manipulation that the cult leader did. And I really enjoy critical thinking in my horror, and in Little Eve, it's done very well. This will not be the last we see of Catriona Ward on this list, by the way. At number eight, Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer from 2014, winner of the Nebula Award for Best 
novel and winner of the Shirley Jackson Award for Best Novel. Annihilation is more science fiction than horror, although I do believe that there is enough horror in this book to satisfy horror fans. At the heart of the story is the exploration of the unknown, which when done well, which is the case here, uh, that is always satisfying to the smart reader. In Annihilation, an expedition is sent to explore Area X, a piece of land that has been cut off from the rest of society because this piece of land has been, uh, has been touched and transformed for reasons we don't know. And this is not the first expedition to explore Area X. I believe there have been over a dozen expeditions already, if I'm not mistaken. The first expedition, uh, they, they came back and reported of an Edenic landscape. And the second expedition uh, ended in mass suicide. And there was another expedition that ended in bloody murder. In this uh, expedition, we follow a scientist. She volunteered uh, for this expedition because, well, firstly, she's a scientist and she wants to explore the unknown. And also for very personal reasons. You see, her husband, uh, he was on a previous expedition and he returned a changed man. Uh, not much of a man, uh, a shell of himself. He returned um, without personality, without an identity. He seemed to have left those back in Area X. So she wants to know why. A book that raises more questions than it answers. If that's the kind of thing that's going to frustrate you as a reader, you're probably better off passing on this one. But if that kind of story can work on you, uh, Annihilation is a good one. At number seven, The Deep by Nick Cutter from 2015. There is an extinction level virus spreading around the globe, but scientists think they have found a cure, may have found a cure. However, this cure, it lies at the bottom of the ocean. So they build a research station and they send a team of scientists down there uh, to the, at the bottom of the um, Mariana Trench. This is uh, over eight kilometers below the surface of the ocean. And the story centers around two characters, one, uh, two brothers, one, a, he's a scientist, he's very smart, and uh, the and his brother is brought in to go down to the station to try to talk his brother into reconnecting or reestablishing communication with the uh, scientist on the surface. This is easily the most claustrophobic book I have ever read. Uh, Nick Cutter, the writer, he takes his time sending his character and the reader down to this research station at the bottom of the ocean. And it is an, an excellent example of setting the atmosphere and placing the reader in a unique uh, environment. And this environment is scary. The last act goes on longer than I would have liked it to. Um, not a phenomenal conclusion, but for two-thirds of the book, it is one of the scariest and one of the most engrossing reads I have experienced. At number six, Blood Music by Greg Bear from 1985. Now, the first half of this book is a classic uh, body horror story about a, an intelligent mutating virus. And the second half of the book is hard sci-fi about the virus taking over and transforming the world. Overall, I really liked the reading experience this book provides. It's almost two books in one or two different reading experiences packed into the same continuous story. Blood Music features a scientist as protagonist, as so many good horror books do. However, the real star of this book is the virus and the interesting way it communicates with its hosts. At number five, The Night of the Hunter by Davis Grubb from 1953. 
Now, the characters in this book aren't very smart, but it's rural USA during the Great Depression. So these people are poor, right? and how can they be smart if they're poor, right? But just because they're not smart doesn't mean that they aren't good, right? I mean, stupid people can be good people too. It's important not to forget that, and this book does a good job of reminding us of that. And this, the writing is gorgeous. It's a, it's a classic for a reason. And uh, e even though the characters might not be smart, uh, Davis Grubb, the writer, he certainly thinks that his readers are smart. And isn't that refreshing? At number four, A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay from 2015. Now this is another example of a book that is borderline YA. Not something I am a fan of, but I loved this book. It centers around a family. The youngest daughter, she's acting a bit strangely. So the father decides that she should undergo an exorcism. And because the family is poor, he has decided to make some money and have a reality show film it. Sounds more like a head full of great ideas, am I right? Now, what drives me crazy in a horror story is when a character uh, sees a shadow, for example, and they think, oh, it's a ghost. And it turns out, yes, it's a ghost. Or when a child is acting strangely, so people think, oh, it, she must be uh, possessed by a demon. And it turns out, yes, she's possessed by a demon. Now, I'm perfectly happy to exercise a certain amount of suspension of disbelief when reading horror. But too, too many authors ask me to turn off my brain while reading. I mean, ghosts aren't real, demons aren't real. And if the author is going to have me accept that these things are real, they need to make an, an effort to get me to do so. What Paul Tremblay does so well in many of his books is that he gives you the ghosts and he gives you the demons, but he also gives you the critical thinking and the rational and the real world too. And he still manages to create compelling and even scary stories without asking the author or without asking the reader to turn off their brains while reading. And I think A Head Full of Ghosts is an excellent example of this. Even though it's fun, it's borderline YA, it's kind of camp and cheesy, uh, it's, still, it's, it's still a smart book and I think uh, a horror book for smart people. At number three, the Case of Charles Dexter Ward by H.P. Lovecraft from 1941. This is a short novel or a long novella, and it centers around a man and his obsessive quest for knowledge. This man and his quest and the knowledge that he obtains, it, it, it eats away at his sanity, but he does not slow down. The titular Charles Dexter Ward, he digs into his family's history. He finds a sorcerer, a necromancer, actually. He attempts to uh, acquire this ancestor's knowledge, and he attempts to raise him from the grave. Like much of Lovecraft's work, this book uh, has a kind of faux documentary style to it, with plenty of footnotes and plenty of references to people and events. Um, that are found in, in, in the Lovecraft world. And this style of narration works very well for uh, Lovecraft. In fact, I think, I think he pulls it off better than most writers who have tried it. I think it works so well for him in large part because through his short stories, he has created this world um, where people like Charles Dexter Ward and the events of the story could actually happen. While this isn't my, uh, my absolute favorite H.P. Lovecraft story, uh, it's up there on the list. Uh, it's a very good horror story and a very good horror story for smart people. At number two, the third book from the year 2015, and this one is Raw Blood by Catriona Ward. 
a historical fiction horror featuring uh, multiple POVs and multiple timelines. Catriona Ward shows us in this, her first novel, how good she is at adapting her writing style to fit the, the time and the specific context in which she's writing for. We have a team or two researchers who are conducting morbid experiments, uh, supposedly working together, though perhaps not as together as they might suspect. We also have a young girl whose overprotective father tells her that she has to stay on the estate, which is called raw blood. If she leaves the estate, something terrible will happen to her. And she cannot develop any emotional ties with uh, anyone outside the estate because terrible things will happen to them too. And we also have a young man in the 20th century who loses his sanity and is hospitalized. I'll be honest with you, while I was reading this book, I had little idea what it was about or what was even going on, really. Um, you think the book is about one thing, but then catch you on award, she twists and turns and it's about another thing and she keeps you guessing until the very end. And it wasn't until the very, very end that I managed to piece things together and understood, or I think I, think I understood what the story is about. And when I did, my my highly intelligent mind was blown. At number one on my list of top 10 horror for smart people, if you are a longtime follower of this channel, this will come as no surprise to you. At number one is House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danielewski from the year 2000. House of Leaves makes it onto all of my top 10s, it would seem. A puzzle in the form of a novel, which is in the form of a labyrinth, which is about a labyrinth? Or is it about so much more than that? At times scary, at times hilarious, an interesting social satire mixed with beautiful passages of literary genius. This book is a masterpiece. Not the kind of book you are going to want to consume quickly. This is a book that demands or expects of the reader to spend some time and make an effort to get into. Uh, but in my opinion, it is well worth it. So there you have it. My list of top 10 horror for smart people. Pretty good list, isn't it? If I've forgotten a title, please do let me hear about it in the uh, comment section. I get so many great recommendations from viewers and it is much appreciated. In a world filled with so many stupid people, I am so thankful to be able to connect with smart people like you. So thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I will see you at the next video. Thank you.